Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Hoops with Noops, brought to you by FTN Bets. I, of course, am Alex Noops Christensen. You can always find all my work on Twitter.com, at underscore Noops. Follow me there. Thank you so much for watching today. Be sure you subscribe to this channel to get all my videos on NBA content for this year for the folks at FTN, as well as tons of great other shows. So again, click that little subscription button down there at the bottom. I'd also really appreciate it if you gave me a like, and then dump me a comment. Let me know if there's anything that um, we could be doing better, anything more you'd like to learn about the NBA when I do these. Again, my videos come on Monday and Friday, and I do a written version of Hoops with Noobs Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday as well. Well, let's jump into it and get started here. Two games tonight in the NBA in-season tournament quarterfinals. We finally got into the knockout stages of the tournament now that we're done with all the groups. The group stage was a lot of fun. I think we got to see some great basketball, and we learned a lot about how much these teams care, and they really did seem to be locked in, to be excited. Um, we saw that last night, a lot of teams pushing really hard to get the biggest margin of victory possible uh, because that really was the big tiebreaker. I hope um, next season one of my suggestions would be that the final night of the in-season tournament, everyone plays. I think you have to feel bad for a couple teams like maybe Orlando uh, specifically is the first one that comes to mind where you know they go into that night at 3-1 to one and just kind of have to watch and see what happens. You know, Weren't able to do anything themselves, uh, whereas a team that won their group, the Boston Celtics, that we'll talk about in a second, really pushed hard and, again, knew what they had to do in that game and what their margin of victory needed to be, and they got there. So uh, hopefully the league can figure that out. Otherwise, it was really a lot of fun. And as we get to these knockout stage games, I've been trying to think about how to handicap them. You know, these in-season tournament games clearly aren't the same as the regular season. We've seen a much different style of basketball. We've seen teams push harder, but it's not quite playoff basketball. The, the playoffs are these long series. Most of the games played are not elimination games. And Teams have the ability to game plan more for teams and, and then also adjust. So you see a little bit more of a dual back and forth. Uh, that's why you see a dynamic in the playoffs where uh, totals drop as the series goes along. Your game seven total should be much lower than your game one total. Because, again, at that point, teams have seen every different wrinkle, have made defensive adjustments for it. And, you know, barring any injuries or stuff like that, uh, that really is the dynamic. And totals in general in those games are much lower. But they're not the same games. Again, this is an elimination game. These teams aren't going to get a chance really to make a lot of adjustments. Now, they do have halftime, and some coaches are better than others there, but it's not going to be this battle where night to night everything is different. It's one time, and I think what that looks more like is probably the play-in tournament games. We've had three years now of the what they call the play-in tournament. Again, the teams that are seated 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th in each conference um, play in a quick tournament there and uh, knockout games basically to see who actually gets the 7th and 8th seed. And This has the same feel to that where uh, teams are playing. It's very important. This is their chance to do something. I expect everyone to be locked in, You know, no rest, no lag issues, no look-ahead games, none of that kind of nonsense. And it is single elimination, and it is just one game. So, again, unlike the playoffs where you have a series of things happening, this is just one, two times. And when you look at those games, the one thing that stands out specifically to me is the change in pace from first half to second half, which you tend to see as teams in the first half are a little closer to their average pace. And then the second game, I'm sorry, in the second half, things slowed down very, very much. Um, what you'll see is teams go into halftime, they kind of make adjustments, and the offense starts to slow down because teams are looking to hunt for the best shot. You'll see the average seconds per possession goes up in the second half. The pace goes up again about three to four points, depending, I'm sorry, three to four possessions, depending on who you look at and kind of what the time frame is. But look for that tonight. You know, it's tough to make any of those bets now, but if you're watching a game that's very fast paced in the first half, but they go into halftime, it's close. Look for opportunities to maybe bet second half unders. So we'll keep an eye on that. And be sure you're in the FTN Bets Discord channel. Any second half unders I bet tonight, uh, we've got two games and I think two really good chances to see this phenomenon tonight. And I'll be sure to put either of those plays again in that FTN Bets Discord. There's an NBA Plays channel. Um, look for it there. So let's get into the actual games. Again, two matchups tonight and a couple things I do like in both games. We'll start with the Boston Celtics at the Indiana Pacers. Uh, these teams have played once before this season, but you can throw that match up out. There was no Tyrese Halliburton. The Celtics won the game handily. So uh, you start to look here at a team again in Indiana that played great in this tournament, won all four of their games to win their group. The Celtics, again, needed to um, really play hard, win that game 
last game. I'm sorry, to win their last game to get to three and one, and not only win but win by a lot. They had to be win that game against the uh, Chicago Bulls. I think it ended up being by about 23, 24 points, but one by 27. And if you were worried at all about whether or not this team cares. Go back and look at what they were doing in the fourth quarter. They were hacking Andre Drummond every single possession down the floor because they knew it was an opportunity for them to create a bigger point margin and actually win this group in advance in the tournament. So, uh, you know, a team like Boston, I know a lot of people were thinking some of these better teams won't be as locked in. The Celtics look like they really want to win this tournament. And you look at the game tonight, the injury report is fairly clean. Now the Celtics will be without Kristaps Porzingis. That's a big piece. Um, he's a good shooter uh, who creates space on offense. and He's a good rim protector um, who can help on defense. Now uh, the Celtics are pretty deep and they'll find some ways, I think, to cover that up. The Pacers, again, pretty clean injury report. Halliburton is listed as questionable. He's got an upper respiratory infection. Infection Didn't play in the last game. I expect him to play tonight, but it's always tough with a head cold and, and stuff like that. So we'll see how he looks. But overall, expecting a pretty clean game here. And when I get into it, this is a really rough matchup for the Indiana Pacers. Uh, Boston, you know, you start basically with the Boston Celtics, who have two of the best perimeter defender guards in the NBA and Drew Holiday and Derek White. And Joe Mazzulla has shown in the past that he does a good job of keeping one of those guys on the floor at all times, especially against teams with good guards. They did this against Milwaukee, had some success against Damian Lillard, uh, did this against the Sixers, had some success against Tyrese Maxey, and expect them to do that tonight. As long as one of those two guys are on the floor, Tyrese Halliburton is going to have to work hard. Now, Porzingis is out. There will be less protection at the rim, especially in minutes that Al Horford is not on the floor. The Celtics are a little thin at center and uh, worried about, you know, kind of what Luke Cornett or, or one of the other backups might do in that position. But it's going to be a tough night for Halliburton. It's going to be tough for him to get around the perimeter. It's a really rough matchup for him. And as you look up and down this roster, uh, Boston is better at just about every position. Again, no poor Singas here, so Miles Turner could be in for a good night. Horford has done well against him, but again, in the minutes Horford are not is not on the floor. I expect again, you know, things to look good for Turner. But overall, this should be a nice spot for Boston. They're healthy, they're rested, they're locked into winning this game. I have them a little bit better than the six points you're seeing here down below, closer to seven and a half, eight, but I think there's some better angles here, especially if you look at the first half. I'm going to play the Celtics in the first half. I'm going to lay the three points of them on the spread for a full unit, and then another unit on their first half team total over 63 and a half. You look at the dynamics of these teams, the Celtics are a great first half team. They're the best rated first half team in the NBA so far this season. They start games with big leads and then manage them over the rest of the second half. And again, we'll talk about what that means for a second half under in a second. You can't bet that now, but uh, we'll put a pin in that dynamic. Again, they start fast, go slow in the second half. They put up a ton of points. Their average points in the first half is in the mid-60s here, and in, especially against a fast-paced team like Indiana tonight. Again, 63-and-a-half. I had this closer to 65-and-a-half, almost 66. And again, the three-point difference, it's the exact opposite dynamic in the first half for the Pacers. They are not a good first-half team in the bottom half, the league and rating in the first half, and much better in the second half. They generally struggle to start, and then you start to see, I think, the fruits of how fast they play in the second half when they're ready ready to go. They're playing fast and other teams are tired and kind of have heavy legs. So I like this spot for Boston. I like them to start fast. Again, three is really light here. I would have this closer again to five and a half. So that's a really nice edge, especially for a first half. So like the Celtics there. And again, a first half team total over. And like I said, to start, I'll put this in the FDN bets discord when I make this bet, but this game has a fantastic dynamic for a first half over second half under kind of thing if the Celtics go into halftime with a five six point lead especially in the third quarter I'll be looking to play that third quarter under live I might even do it pregame honestly with that third quarter you can find that some places or at the very least a second half live as Boston gets control of this game and I think you'll start to see them take the air out of the ball keep possessions light stop running up and down with the Pacers and find a way to slow them down so like the game tonight for Boston overall a little worried if things get tight late you might get backdoored in the full game spread but these first half numbers look great again full unit on both i'm not even splitting it up here i like the first half minus three and then the first half team total over 63 and a half the second game also going to be very good here two teams that um had a really big sweat on the last night of the in-season tournament group play now the pelicans weren't playing but if the houston rockets had won they would not be here 
Rockets lost, Pelicans advanced, 3-1 to one, the best record in the group. And the Sacramento Kings, Malik Monk makes a late two-pointer to win that game and win them the group. They win all four games in their group and, again, sneak away with the Warriors. If they lose that game, it goes into a point differential tie, and they're probably not in this tournament. So uh, two teams that feel really good being here that are excited and um, at one team in Sacramento that is finally health, that has been healthy for a couple of weeks and is playing great basketball. If you look at some of their numbers that De'Aaron Fox, I want to make sure I get these right here. Um, their record this year when Fox plays, um, they're nine and four. Sorry, the Sacramento Kings are nine and four when De'Aaron Fox plays. Their net rating with De'Aaron Fox on the court is plus 4.6. It's minus 6.4 without him. That is a huge, 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 huge difference. That is just a totally different basketball team, and we've seen it over the last couple of weeks. However, the Pelicans are finally about to be healthy themselves. Uh, they've been without their guards for a big chunk of the season. You've heard me talk about cluster injuries on here before. Jose Alvarado, Herbert Jones, and C.J. McCollum, as well as Trey Murphy, are their four best guards. Trey Murphy has been out all season until a few nights ago, comes back. He is immediately the best shooter on this team. And we saw in his first game how much more space there was on the floor as he draws his defender away from the basket and towards him on the perimeter, allowing Jonas Valanciunas to get better looks in the post to allow Zion to attack more easily with less people in help position. McCollum is a huge leader on this team, especially offensively. He can bring the ball up the floor and initiate, allowing those other guys to attack off the ball. Zion's great at that. And then Herb Jones and Jose Alvarado are two of the better defensive guards in the NBA. Herbert Jones has been historically, historically has been especially good against the Aaron Fox. And uh, that's where I kind of start tonight here. I think the market is really underestimating how much better this Pelicans team is going to be with all their guards back with the defensive matchup that they can create tonight for these Sacramento Kings. And uh, just the fact that there's, it's finally going to be at their best form here with everyone healthy. So I look at this team. I think they're underrated tonight. I had this game closer to one point. And again, the matchup screams Pelicans here. Alvarado and Jones should be able to keep uh, De'Aaron Fox in front of them. They've got guys behind them that can protect the rim. So defensively, I think Fox is going to have a tough night tonight. Sabonis is going to be exhausted trying to slow down either Valanchunas in the post or William Zion Williamson coming at the rim at a full head of steam. It's It really seems like a bad matchup for Sacramento. And even though they're at home, again, I've got the Pelicans as one-point underdogs, but I could make a case for them being short favorites if you look at small enough samples of data here and some of the more recent stuff. So Give me the Pelicans. Uh, plus three and a half is a really nice number. I love getting that. Anything plus three or better looks good. You can find this at FanDuel or DraftKings right now. Looks like a really good opportunity. Uh, not sure what I'm going to do with this game in terms of that first half, second half dynamic. But again, any bets I do have, I'll be sure to put in that FDN Bets Discord. And that's all today. No not for noobs. We've only got two games. I've made a bet on both of them. So that's everything we have. Let's go back again and recount those. Um, in the Boston Celtics, Indiana Pacers game, I like the Celtics in the first half every which way. I'll lay three points in the first half spread and take their first half team total over 63 and a half. You can find both of those at our friends at DraftKings. If you haven't signed up there, make sure you go through the link on FTN Bets. Some great sign-up bonuses there. And then another bet I like, either DraftKings or FanDuel. Again, great sign-up offers for both. Give me the Pelicans, plus 3.5. Really anything plus 3 or better looks really nice tonight. I like New Orleans' chances. So really appreciate it. Again, thank you so much for watching. watching. Subscribe. Thumbs up. Really appreciate the like and drop a comment um, if you have something nice to say, maybe, or even something mean. I don't know. Whatever you're thinking, dump something down there. Again, I'll be back in video form on Friday and written form again. You can find me today as well if you'd like to read. I'll also be back Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday with a written piece as well. As always, be sure to sign up for FTN Bets. Check out their social media accounts to see if they're running. Maybe a special. I know there's some stuff up here towards the holidays, but as always, you can see down there on the crawl a code for you to get at least 10% off. A tons of great tools. You get access to that Discord channel where you get all these bets as early as possible. So thanks for watching. Check out all the great stuff at FTN, and best of luck until we speak again.